Welcome to More Feedback Machine. For version 2.5, we've redesigned the interface and added some new and exciting features and algorithms. At the heart of this plugin are four delay lines, which we can see arranged on the left. Looking at the bottom of the interface, however, we also find four flexible LFOs, a pair of multi-stage envelopes, and a four-slot modulation matrix. So there's obviously more to this plugin than just simple delay effects. Four filters with flexible routing options, two effects processors, and two compressors offer you various opportunities for experimentation and creative sound mangling. If you're new to the plugin, you may want to start by switching the top section to the Presets tab, which organizes presets by category. Let's set up a new patch. To start from scratch, right-click on the main data display and select Init. I've set up a drum loop consisting of two tracks, a bass drum and a snare drum. The bass drum track is dry, without any effects on it. I'm routing an auxiliary send from the snare drum track to this instance of MFM2. Because I'm running the plugin as a send rather than an insert, I'll start by turning the dry level all the way down and the wet level all the way up. Looking at the four delay lines on the left, the controls start with an input setting field with a choice of left or right channels, mono sum or no input at all. Our snare is mono anyway, so we'll go with the default mono sum setting for delay line one. And then set the other three delays to none, so we're now hearing only the first delay. Next to it, we find the time base parameter, which determines how we set the delay times. If I choose one of the millisecond options, the knob to the right can be used to set absolute delay times that don't depend on the host's tempo. If I switch back to one of the sync settings, the delay times are set relative to the host tempo. And we have an extra sync field below to set the beat division. Though we can still scale that setting with the knob, now labeled ratio, I'll double click to reset it. Let's try a dotted eighth note for the sync setting. Moving right, we find a pan and an output level control for each delay. But notice that there are no individual feedback controls. Instead, we have top center, a large master feedback knob, which globally controls the feedback for all four delay lines. Turning this all the way down results in just a single delay echo after each snare hit. While turning it all the way up will keep the delays circulating constantly. Notice the field below the master feedback knob, which currently says 4 mono. This refers to the feedback configuration, which we can see represented by the diagram below. In this case, each delay simply feeds back into itself. Let's click the field and pick the next feedback mode, dual ping pong, and the pattern of delays suddenly becomes more complex. As we can see from the diagram, delay line one is now feeding into delay two, while delay two feeds back into delay one. So we have a complex feedback loop with two different delay times in the path. We're now seeing activity on delay line two, even though it still has no input selected. And we can pan it apart from delay one to create stereo effects. If I pick quad ping pong, our feedback loop will circulate through all four delay lines. So they're now all active, even though we're still only feeding an input signal into the first one. Let's set delays three and four to eighth notes. The next mode, quad permute, effectively runs the signal around the loop in both directions at once. With high feedback settings, this mode can easily spiral out of control, in which case you might want to make use of the panic button to instantly clear the delay buffers and stop the madness. However, 
If the feedback is still set high, the delays will build back up again. You may find it useful to enter the settings and MIDI learn a hardware controller for the feedback control, so you can play it with a hardware knob instead of the mouse. Of course, you'll still need to route incoming MIDI data to the plugin. For this to work, the method will vary depending on the host door that you're using. And now, we have more feedback modes to try. Quad Network, which feeds each delay back into itself as well as all the others. Or 1, 2 into 3, 4, which also feeds delays 3 and 4 back into themselves. Alternatively, we could pick user matrix and create our own custom routing. Turning up the top left knob will route delay 1 back into itself, as in the first 4 mono mode. But if we double click this knob to reset it and turn up the one next to it, we're now feeding delay 1 into delay 2 instead. As the arrows to the left indicate signal flow, it's easy to work out how to route delay 2 into delay 3. Delay 3 to delay 4. And finally delay 4 back to delay 1 to create a circular loop, similar to the quad ping pong mode. And as before, the master feedback knob will globally scale all those feedback settings. So much for now. Be sure to check out our other MFM2 tutorials and see you around. <laughs>